is up family welcome back to the channel right now we're about to get a little bit of a free air demo for you guys from the STW350 this is a sub 15 inch subwoofer by Peerless I promise you guys this a while back so I'm just trying to hold up on my promise and yes I am on the back porch why am I on the back porch because my wife made me come on the back porch okay <laughs> She said I was making too much noise in the house. And so she made me come out here. I love my wife, so I don't mind. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of echoes going on when I talk. Because this is not padded like my room. Right now, what I'm going to do is show you guys a bit of the uh, wiring I got going on here. For those who are new to the channel who has not seen this subwoofer before, this is the Peerless S350. This is a dual configuration. Uh, subwoofer, 15 inch subwoofer. It's rated at 3500 watts RMS, uh, 5000 watt peak. Uh, right now I have it wired in parallel down to 4 ohms. I'm going to be powering this thing with the Dayton Audio SP8 1000. I'm sorry, this is not the SP8 1000, this is the SA 1000. Uh, this is not a plate amplifier. Anything in Dayton Audio in terms of amplifier, when you see the, the P in the name, that typically means plate. So this is not the SA, I mean, this is not the SPA 1000. This is the SA 1000, as you guys can see right there. And that's what we're going to be using to power this guy right here. This amplifier is actually rated at 1000 watts at 4 ohms, which is what we have this thing wired in. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have a little fun here. Just give a little bit of flex demo, free air. I got another. I got quite a few flex demos already of this in a sealed enclosure, and uh, you guys pretty much uh, you seem to like that a whole lot. Uh, I also actually got one, another uh, flex demo of it inside of my car uh, in a ported enclosure as well. You guys seem to like those videos. So I'm going to bring you another one, uh, free air, since I've never given you guys one that was free air. Uh, so right now, I just want you guys to look at my setup here. Uh, the SA-1000 do have these uh, front controls right here. Um, I do have the gain turned all the way down. Uh, frequency is at um, frequency and hertz is at 105. Uh, phase is at zero. I don't really even touch a whole lot of this stuff here. It's a, it's a subwoofer amplifier. You really want to control the gain and get things moving, and that's all we're doing right now. We're not trying to tune this or anything of that nature. We just want to get the cone moving, let you guys see exactly what it's working with. All right, so right here, what I'm doing, I'm giving you guys an aerial view of the subwoofer uh, for all the new guys who may have be seen who may be seeing this for the first time this subwoofer does have a seven and a half inch voice coil it's 3500 watts rms 5000 watt peak it has an internal magnet design with real mount options and just a few of the things i want to go through before i actually get the cone moving uh, with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to be using about 200 watts in this demo, even though this thing can take an abuse. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. That's for an upcoming video. And as you guys can see right there, uh, you do get a clear shot of a little bit of the of the little bit of the, the coil underneath. You guys can see a bit of the top plate through the venting right there. And it's giving you about, I want to say a good inch and a half, maybe two inches of throw right here. It's not reaching its maximum uh, travel at all in this video because I only gave it 200 watts. If you notice the scars on the table, that's because I tried to give you guys a quick uh, flex demo with this thing maxed out. Um, what, what the uh, amplifier can do anyway. And it just, it was all over the table. I chose to go with a 10 hertz frequency right here because 10 hertz look good on on screen um, to get the cone moving not too quickly where you can't see things and it also uh, believe it or not it gave me more control of it on, on the table when I tried to push it to like 35 40 60 hertz the thing was all over the place and that's indicative of the scars that's on the table you see there so I chose not to do that I said well let me just give it a 10 hertz frequency and we're gonna go from there um, one thing I also want to point out to you guys is the importance of the voice coil. 
I know I, co I covered this in some of the videos previous, but what I want to talk about now is uh, a few of the pros and cons that I feel more so the pros of having a larger voice cord that I did not cover in the previous video. If you guys want to check out the previous video, I'll leave a card on screen. You guys be looking for that. Um, but one of the main cons to having a large voice coil is the fact that it adds um, uh, it adds mass to the cone, which 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 a lot or means that you're gonna have to add a bit more power to get it moving. But that's okay. And in, in the world of car audio, you got some some fanatics out there that don't mind putting as much power as they can must into their system. So that 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 shouldn't be that big of an issue if you're gonna purchase something like this. For home studio, uh, home audio, home theater systems, because you're going to be pushing a lot of power anyway. Maybe not in a studio, but definitely home theater systems and car audio setups. On screen right now, you're getting a good slow motion of the cone movement. I did this. I slowed things down so that you guys can actually get a, a better look at the movement of the cone and see how linear it is. Even under this, this frame right here, um, which, which which you do have camera roll. I know some people may not be able to see it all that good, but uh, some of you more experienced guys will notice a bit of ca uh, camera roll here in the uh, in the filming of this. But however, even with that, it still looks very very linear. Uh, so what do I mean by that? You you have very minimum cone wobble, and the reason because of that, uh, the reason uh, why that is is because. Uh, the, this large voice core, what, what this design allots for the subwoofer is um, a minimum cone wobble. That's, that is one thing that many manufacturers over the years have struggled with in production of subwoofers with smaller voice cores. Uh, if you just think about the moving mass, you got a 15, 18 inch uh, cone on some of these subwoofers they only got like three inch voice call, four inch voice call. And I, I did get a few replies on the initial, um, uh, on the complete overview that I did of this subwoofer that they were saying that, you know, because the voice call is so large, that means that the spider is not gonna be as large and that it's, it's not gonna have that much throw. People, please don't be fooled by some of these these stats or these these parameters that they put on these subwoofers, please understand what some of these things mean. X Max is not a tell-all of cone travel for a subwoofer. It it is not. I explained it a little bit more in a previous video in the complete review that I did of this. I hope you guys go and check that out. X Max does not tell you the complete cone travel peak to peak of a subwoofer, which is why many manufacturers will list in addition the the peak to peak uh cone cone travel uh because x max is just a simple calculation of two different parameters uh however i also wanted to point out the importance of how a a subwoofer or a speaker actually produces sound it produces sound through the voice call the voice call is what does all the work all the electromagnetic power is I, mean, I shouldn't say electromagnetic power, but yeah, electromagnetic power is is um, um, directly impacted. The, the voice call is directly impacted by that. All your power is flowing through it. So when you're talking about the ability to move air and to vibrate the air, it's the voice call that does all the work. And you don't want a uh, a voice call that is too small on a in, on a cone that is too large because it it will give you. Uh, cone wobble and cone wobble will lead to uh, voice core rub and things of that nature but anyway you with a larger voice core you do get more cone control um, not so much with a smaller voice core and you get more linearity as well uh, with a minimize uh, with minimized cone wobble but anyway I didn't I didn't mean to make this a technical video uh, I didn't mean to go too far off into that, but I just wanted to point out a few things that was left in the comments and just address those things for you guys. But overall, this is a flex demo. You guys see what's on screen. Uh, I will be bringing you guys a bit more with this when I can mount this a bit more stable and get the cone really moving. I want to push this thing to its X max, uh, to its limits for you guys. But just stay tuned for that. I'm going to wrap this one here up for right now. And uh, 
As always, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. New guys, click the notification bell to receive updates on videos like this and more. And until next time, it's your boy D, and I'm out.